Hello and welcome to Railroad Journeys Around the World. In this volume, we'll be looking at the distinctive railroads of Belgium. Considering the small geographical size of Belgium, the country as a whole offers an unrivaled selection of interest for the modern traction enthusiast. As we shall see, there's an incredible variety of interesting classes at work throughout the length and breadth of Belgium on both local and international passenger services. Also spotlighted is the wide assortment of freight traffic that works in Belgium on both mainline and less well-known freight-only lines. Despite Belgium's close proximity to both the UK and her other European neighbours, the country's fascinating railway network has generated comparatively little international interest. One of the busiest main lines in Belgium runs between Brussels and Ostend, with branches to three further coastal termini at Blankenberger, Zeebrugge and Nock. Like many Belgian towns, Ostend has the additional benefit and interest of trams as well as trains. This particular tramway is part of a long coastal route, stretching about 50 kilometres from Nock to De Pan. It's a remnant of the once extensive network of metre gauge Vicinal railways, most of which have now been closed. This imposing façade is a reminder of more prosperous times at Ostend, when the combination of rail plus ferry was the quickest way to travel between London and Brussels. Today, much of the maritime trade has gone. The opening of the Channel Tunnel has spelt the demise of many of the long-distance trains which used to operate out of Ostend, serving places such as Baal, Vienna, Berlin and even Moscow. On the main line from Bruges to Brussels, there are few impediments to fast running. Trains are scheduled to cover the 96 kilometres in just under an hour. The southern side of the city of Ghent is St. Peter's Station, one of the busiest Belgian stations outside Brussels. The city centre is easily reached by the trams which stop outside the main entrance of the station. In railway terms, Ghent lies almost exactly halfway between Ostend and Brussels. There's a non-stop train from Ghent to Brussels every half hour throughout the day and there are hourly intercity trains from Ghent to most other major towns in Belgium. A fascinating freight-only operation is the 30-kilometre-long branch line from Ghent to Terneuzen. Terneuzen lies on the lower estuary of the River Schelde and is in the Netherlands, but its only means of rail access, and direct road access too for that matter, is through Belgium. Because of that, the railway to Terneuzen is worked in two sections, joined together by these exchange sidings at Sass van Ghent. Trains for Terneuzen are brought as far as Sass van Ghent by a Belgian locomotive, in this case a Class 62 diesel electric, allocated to Merrowbaker depot in Ghent. On the Dutch part of the branch between Sass van Ghent and Terneuzen, it's always Netherlands Railways traction in charge. This Class 2200 diesel electric is arriving at Sass van Ghent with a rake of chemical tanks from one of the private sidings at Terneuzen. The branch itself is mainly single track, but like its partner on the other side of the canal, it's reasonably busy with several trains each weekday. This working is destined for the marshalling yard at Merrill Baker near Ghent, where the wagons will be shunted and fed into the European wagon load network. The 
train is hauled by a Class 51 diesel electric, an early 60s mixed traffic design that can still be seen working in most parts of Belgium, except in the southeastern part of the country, where Class 55s are used instead. This mixture of wagon types is typical for a train conveying cold-reduced steel coil. The last wagon in the train carries the new Belgian Railways freight logo, B Cargo. On the left here are some of the access lines for other freight users of the branch, including a major coal import terminal. In a small country, the Belgian Motive power fleet is remarkably varied. There are no less than 15 different classes of electric locomotive in regular service today. The most numerous electric type is the Class 23 design, with a fleet size of 83. The 23s are a useful mixed traffic design first introduced in the mid-1950s, but still performing well today. One of their features is regenerative braking for use when hauling heavy freight trains. Visually similar to the Class 23s are the Class 25s. The 25s are a less numerous class with just 22 examples in service. They were built as a standard design in the early 1960s, but eight of them were rebuilt in the early 70s as dual voltage machines so that they could haul cross-border trains to and from Amsterdam. They carry the old Benelux livery of yellow on dark blue. Another dual voltage design for working into the Netherlands is this Class 11. A fleet of 12 Class 11s was built for the Brussels to Amsterdam intercity service in the mid-1980s. The problem of different railway networks adopting conflicting electrification systems is potentially very serious in mainland Europe. The ultimate inflexibility has to be these Class 16 and Class 18 locomotives, which are capable of working on four different voltages although these features obviously involve extra construction and operating expenses. The Class 18s have unmistakable French styling and are based on the successful SNCF CC 40100 class. The Class 20 is the most powerful design of electric locomotive operated by Belgian railways. A fleet of 25 was introduced in the mid-1970s for intercity passenger duties. They were the first Belgian design to incorporate thyristor control and soon gained a reputation for poor reliability, although matters are now somewhat improved. The Class 27 was the first of the 1980s generation of Belgian electrics. It's a design that was developed after experience with the Class 20. A total of 60 Class 27s were built between 1981 and 1984 and they can be seen all over the Belgian network on both passenger and freight duties. The Class 21s are basically similar to the Class 27s but are slightly less powerful. A fleet of 60 Class 21s was built between 1984 and 1987. All of them are based at either Ostend or Antwerp, and like the 27s, they can be seen on both passenger and freight work. Another mixed traffic design that's equally at home on freight or passenger is the Class 26, a design first introduced in the mid-1960s. Although all 34 members of the class are allocated to Monceau, near Charleroi, they can be seen in many different parts of the Belgian network. This particular example is unusual in being the last of its class to carry the now superseded livery of yellow with blue body side stripe.
There are seven different classes of mainline diesel traction in Belgium. Classes 52, 53 and 54 all basically belong to the same family. They were originally a no-hab General Motors design, dating back to the early 1950s. The second locomotive in this pair still has its original cab, but all the other survivors have now had their cabs replaced. Despite their age, relatively few members of classes 52, 53 and 54 have so far been withdrawn, although four were severely damaged in an accident in October 1994, and it appears that three out of the four have been scrapped as a result. Some of these locos still have train heating boilers and can be seen on passenger workings, although the majority are now boilerless and are restricted to less prestigious duties, such as this engineer's train on the athos Mers line. The Class 51 was first introduced in 1961. It has a Cockerill Baldwin engine and electrical parts supplied by ACEC, unlike Classes 52 to 54, which are all basically General Motors products. Examples of the Class 55, which is an enlarged and more powerful Coco version of the Bobo Class 62, can be seen on freight and occasionally on passenger trains, mainly based in the Liège area in the eastern part of Belgium. Eight Class 55s have been fitted with electric train heating for working passenger trains between Liège and Luxembourg. They carry this non-standard blue and yellow livery instead of the usual yellow and green. The Class 62 is a slightly less powerful design compared with Classes 51 to 55. The most obvious difference externally is that it has only two axles instead of three per bogey. This example still carries its original green livery and is seen working a rail tour organised by along different lines. Class 62s are widely used on passenger workings and also appear on freight duties, often double-headed. This one is hauling a rake of M2 stock on an interregional train from Depan to Gerardsbergen. Surprisingly, the Class 75 isn't a mainline loco. In fact, it's a shunter, used mainly in and around Antwerp docks. It's a rather similar design to the Class 62, but has hydraulic transmission instead of electric. Surely the most interesting diesel locomotive class in Belgium is the Class 59. These very distinctive machines have had a curious history in recent years, having twice been brought back from the dead. The Class 59s were first introduced back in 1954. They were gradually withdrawn from service as life expired in the 1980s and the last member of the class was officially deleted from stock in 1989. Two years later though, SNCF were short of traction for building the new TGV line in northern France and 10 Belgian 59s were reinstated and drafted in. When their use on the TGV line was finished, the 59s were again ready for withdrawal. But then it was decided that they'd come in handy for building the new Belgian high-speed line between Lille and Brussels. So, in the meantime, to keep them in working order, the 10 locomotives returned to traffic on revenue-earning freight duties, some six years after their original withdrawal date. Right at the heart of the Belgian freight network is Antwerp Dam Motive Power Depot. Although the depot isn't open to the general public, there is a nearby road bridge that does give a good overview of the activities at the yard. 
Antwerp is by far the busiest rail freight centre in Belgium. The city itself is located on the Schelde estuary and has been an important focus for maritime trade ever since the Middle Ages. Today, Antwerp ranks as the second busiest port in Europe. The rail network within the port is extensive, adding up to about 900 kilometers of track in total. Many of the lines run alongside public roads, and there are several of these distinctive lifting bridges. Altogether, Antwerp accounts for some 43% of Belgian Railway's total freight traffic. To put it another way, in a typical 24-hour period, there are about 140 loaded trains leaving the port and about 110 loaded arrivals. Most of the traffic is for export or import, but there are also some major flows to and from industries located within the port. In many ways, the nerve centre of docks freight operations is Antwerp North Marshalling Yard. The first yard here was opened in the 1930s, but the present layout dates back only to 1993, when a major expansion scheme was completed. There are two separate yards, one for arrivals and one for departures, each with 56 sorting sidings. The yard has been fully resignalled and equipped with a computerized control center to make it the most modern of its kind in Belgium. International traffic accounts for about 70% of Belgian Railway's freight carryings. One of the busiest international arteries is on the main line to the Netherlands. Intermodal traffic is currently one of the brightest hopes for Belgian rail freight. There are now 10 container terminals in Belgium. including a new facility in Antwerp docks which handles about 60% of all containers passing through the port. Recently, Belgian Railways has acquired 300 new intermodal wagons and has introduced a number of new trunk services, mainly on long-distance routes to and from southern Europe. One of the most interesting long-distance rail freight flows is the daily iron ore train from Antwerp to Luxembourg. The journey starts in Antwerp docks at the ore import terminal, which is one of the busiest locations with plenty of traffic always on the move. The bulk import terminal, which handles iron ore, also handles coal and coke. This fan of sidings sees almost constant activity, day and night, with a schedule of more than 30 arrivals and 30 departures in each 24-hour period. Surprisingly, considering the regular volumes of traffic, the main route from Antwerp to the south is not all quadruple track. This stretch between Antwerp and Mechelen has two main claims to fame. It was the first railway line to be built in Belgium, opening to traffic in 1835, 
and it was also the first line in the country to be electrified, precisely 100 years later in 1935. One of the main flows out of Antwerp is iron ore to Belval in Luxembourg. Trains on this route have to change traction twice. From Antwerp to Louvain, a single electric is sufficient, whereas from Louvain to Ronay near Namur, double-headed electrics are needed. From Ronay southwards, the same train is then diesel hauled as it follows the highly scenic Athus Meurs line via Dinant and Bertrice. This line is one of three roughly parallel railway routes linking Belgium with Luxembourg. The middle route via Libremont and Stockholm is already fully electrified and carries mainly long distance passenger traffic, while the other two routes, including this one, are still diesel worked at present and carry a mixture of passenger and freight. Athos Meurs line has some of the last remaining pockets of semaphore signalling in Belgium. This splendid bracket is guarding the entrance to Von Esch Tunnel, roughly halfway between Dinan and Bertrice. With nearly 2,000 tonnes of iron ore in tow, the two Luxembourg railways type 1800 diesel electrics are reduced to a crawl as they emerge from Von Esch Tunnel. On the left are the signs of the imminent resignalling scheme. Haulage of freight trains on the Athos Meurs line is shared between Luxembourg and Belgian railways. This particular working always produces Luxembourg traction, while other trains on the route are hauled by Belgian locomotives. The Type 1800s won't seem too unfamiliar to the Belgian crew, as they're basically the same design as the Belgian Class 55, just with some minor detail differences. Another regular freight flow on the Athos Meurs line is steel coil. This heavy train load is heading south near Pont Rome, behind another pair of 1950s diesels, this time a Class 52 paired with a Class 54. The second locomotive of the pair, number 5404, is unique on Belgian railways in having retained its original USA-style rounded cabs. Originally, all members of classes 52, 53 and 54 had cabs like this, but unfortunately they suffered from poor soundproofing, and the only effective solution was total replacement. Luxembourg-bound consist is now approaching the disuse station of Pondrome. Both Pondrome and its neighbour, Von Esch, were closed to passenger traffic in September 1993, along with 30 other lightly used Belgian stations. single line working here at Gendron is because of engineering work going on in Gendron Tunnel in readiness for electrification. 
This northbound rake of empty steel wagons is a balancing working to the loaded train which we've just seen at Pondrome. the northern end of the Athos Meurs line is already electrified between Dinan and Namur, all freight workings remain diesel hauled throughout. The traction changeover point is at Ronne Yard, just north of Namur. Passengers on this attractive line are afforded some of the most scenic views in Belgium. This northernmost stretch of the athus Meurs line between Dinan and Namur was electrified in 1990. It runs for almost 30 kilometres alongside the River Meuse, making it one of the most attractive journeys on Belgian railways. While most passenger trains on this stretch are electrically hauled, this particular one is a through working from Houye on the line from Athus and is therefore diesel worked. This push-pull service that runs in the summertime only caters mainly for tourist traffic to and from the beautiful Ardennes region. The main passenger service between Dinan and Namur is worked by electric multiple units, but through services to points further afield, such as the summer-dated service between Dinan and Ghent, a locomotive hauled. Dinant is also the northern limit of one of Belgium's most interesting preserved railways. Since 1990, the preservation group known locally as the Chemin de Fer à Vapeur des Trois-Vallées has taken over operations on the 23-kilometre line from here at Dinant to Givet in France. A summer-only service is now operated along the line, mainly using diesel railcars, but with some steam working at weekends. The line from Dinant to Givet follows the gently meandering valley of the River Meuse with its spectacular limestone cliffs. This Class 46 railcar is just emerging from the one tunnel on the line at Ossarem. Originally, this line formed part of a major international route and until the Second World War, it carried a substantial amount of heavy freight. But in the 50s and 60s, traffic volumes declined sharply. In 1984, the passenger service was cut back to just four return journeys a day, and in 1988, it was withdrawn altogether. Finally, the line lost its scheduled freight services as well in 1989. The main focus for the rail network in eastern Belgium is the city of Liège. The countryside and railways in this part of Belgium are particularly attractive and well worth exploring. Here at the mainline station of liege guillemin a Class 21 electric is just departing towards Brussels with a rake of M4 coaches. The only diesel operated service out of Liège is on the main line to Luxembourg via Trois-Ponts and Gouvy. All trains on this route are rostered for class 55 haulage and are formed of a standard rake of M4 design coaching stock. The line via Trois-Ponts and Gouvy is the easternmost of the three roughly parallel railway routes from Belgium to Luxembourg. At its northern end, it follows the picturesque wooded valleys of the rivers Outh, Ombiev and Saône. 
Although it's classed as a main line, it has more than its fair share of curves and gradients as it threads its way through the eastern fringe of the Ardennes Hills. As an economy measure in the early 1990s, a 25-kilometre long stretch of the line was reduced to single track with just one intermediate passing loop. Gouvy is the last station in Belgium before crossing over into Luxembourg. Electrification reached Gouvy from the Luxembourg direction in 1993, although most passenger trains continue to be diesel worked under the wires in order to avoid a locomotive change. The wires here have been energised on the standard Luxembourg system of 25 kilovolts AC. Freight workings between Luxembourg and Liège are relatively few and far between. There are usually just two or three scheduled services during daylight hours. Photogenic triple heading workings like this aren't either normal or strictly speaking necessary. This is just an easy way of getting a spare locomotive back from Gouvy to its home depot at Liège Quincampoix. The Class 55s have more or less the monopoly of freight as well as passenger workings on the Liège to Luxembourg line. This trio is slowing to a halt just outside Trois-Pont station in order to wait for a southbound passenger train to clear the long single line section from EY. Although by no means necessary for this comparatively modest load, all three locos are in fact powered and working. An attractive secondary route in the Flemish-speaking northern part of Belgium is the cross-country line from Ghent to Garansbergen. It's one of the few passenger routes in Belgium to have escaped electrification. The usual motive power on this pleasant rural route is a Class 62 Bobo. These are the most numerous class of diesels in Belgium, with a total fleet size of 136. Loco hold action like this may not be particularly viable in today's cost-effective railway age, but it certainly looks impressive enough. The massive dimensions of the Class 62 contrast with the rather lower roof line of the M2 coaching stock used on this route. The M2s were built in the late 1950s, but have a number of modern features, including sliding doors and electric as well as steam heating. In common with many lines in Belgium, trains between Ghent and Gerardsbergen run at fixed hourly intervals throughout the day, with some extras at peak periods. This regular interval timetable pattern was established nationally in 1984, until then, some lines and stations had been served only intermittently. One of the largest centres for railway preservation in Belgium is here at Marienburg, on the northern fringe of the Ardennes. 
This is where the Chemin de Fer à Vapeur des Trois Vallées, the Three Valleys steam railway, has its main base. This rare surviving example of a Belgian roundhouse now holds a fascinating array of historic motive power from Belgium and from other European countries. Altogether, the Chemin de Fer des Trois Vallées owns over 20 steam locomotives, mainly built in Belgium, but also including several German designs, as well as seven diesels and 11 railcars. In May 1995, the railway held its annual diesel weekend and ran a series of special trains with varied motive power between Marienburg and Train. This train is formed of one of the two surviving Class 40 diesel hydraulic multiple units, built in 1957 and withdrawn by Belgian railways in the 1980s. Trains leaving Marienburg on the preserved line use a special platform adjacent to the locomotive shed. The connection to the Belgian railway's main line is used only by light locomotive and empty stock movements. A very popular performer at the diesel weekend is this former Luxembourg Railway's Class 1600 diesel electric, number 1602. It was withdrawn from normal revenue earning service as recently as autumn 1994, along with the other two surviving members of its class. Now it normally resides in the museum of the Chemin de Fer des Trois Vallées at Trenya. The Luxembourg 1600s were almost identical to the Belgian railway's Class 52s. from Marienburg to Trenje follows the picturesque valley of the river Viroin. Originally, this formed part of a cross-border route to Vireux in France. Closure of the line took place in several stages between 1961 and 1977. Meanwhile, the preservation movement was getting itself established in Marienburg, ready to give this delightful byway a new lease of life. The former frontier station at Trenya now marks the end of the preserved line. The station buildings have been converted into laboratory accommodation for the University of Brussels, while out of sight on the other side of the line is the museum recently established by the Chemin de Fer des Trois Vallées. Main line steam in Belgium is today sadly a comparative rarity. At present, this splendid Class 29 280, which is part of the Belgian National Railway collection based at Leuven, is the only loco passed for mainline running. However, work on a privately owned ex-Polish TY2, which is being faithfully restored as a Belgium Class 26, is well advanced, and this means that there should soon be another loco to add to the mainline roster. 29013 first entered service on the 8th of February 1946 and is one of 300 of this type supplied by Canadian builders to fill an engine shortage in Belgium after the war. It was eventually withdrawn almost 21 years later in February 1967. This splendid 462 was built by Cockerill and first entered service on the 19th of March 1935 as one of a class of 35 class 1 Pacifics. It was withdrawn from service on the 30th of September 1962, but subsequently lovingly restored to running order, also as part of the national collection. Sadly, its mainline ticket expired recently, and lack of funding for repairs means that its future as an active locomotive is somewhat uncertain. Perhaps the most distinctive of steam types from Belgium is this Class 12 Streamlined 442. 
Six of these locomotives were built in 1939, and they were the last Atlantics to be built in the world. It was withdrawn from normal service on the 27th of September 1962, and like the Class 1 Pacific, it's now laid up again at Leuven, awaiting funds for its repair. International trains are a salient feature of the Belgian railway network, with several key routes linking Belgium with its four European neighbours, the Netherlands, Germany, Luxembourg and France. Here at Rosendahl, just over the border in Netherlands territory, a Belgian Class 25.5 is pulling away with the early morning train from Amsterdam to Paris. This subclass of eight locomotives can work both on Dutch and Belgian electrification systems. The coaching stock is the Belgian Railway's eye design, used on international trains. This holiday train from Amsterdam to Port Bou on the French-Spanish border is again hauled by a class 25.5, but this time the coaching stock is a rake of French Railway's Corail vehicles. The strategic link between Brussels and Amsterdam is covered by an hourly intercity service throughout the day, using push-pull formations like this. It's a service operated jointly by Dutch and Belgian railways, with Dutch railways providing the coaching stock and Belgian railways supplying the traction. The whole formation carries the new standard Benelux livery of yellow and Bordeaux red. This hourly service is an excellent example of cooperation between neighbouring European railway systems, reflecting the steady growth in international rail travel. <laughs> Haulage for the Brussels to Amsterdam service is a dual voltage class 11 electric. En route, the train has to reverse direction at Antwerp Central, which is a terminal station, after which the Class 11 is at the front of the train. Antwerp is the second largest city in Belgium, with a population of roughly half a million. It quickly became one of the major nodes on the Belgian railway network and has an impressively grandiose passenger station to match. It's well worth allowing extra time to explore Antwerp with its superb tram network. Antwerp Railway Cathedral, as it's often called, was designed by the architect Louis de la Sancerie, a native of Bruges. Behind this imposing façade is a train shed canopy 66 metres wide and 43 metres high. Like many other 19th century city centre stations, Antwerp Central is a terminus. The building of Antwerp Central took a full 10 years to complete, from 1895 until 1905. Today, nearly a century later, the legacy of Louis de la Sancerie is still enjoyed by many hundreds of travellers each day, its spacious interior offering some welcome respite from the hustle and bustle of city life outside. For modern operating purposes, though, the fact that Antwerp Central is a terminus poses a few problems. The planned solution is to build a new through station underneath the existing platforms on a new north to south alignment. line through Antwerp will be accompanied by a major upgrading of the existing route between Antwerp and Brussels and the line speed will be raised to 160 kilometers an hour. <laughs> 
The Belgian capital is served by three mainline passenger stations, all of which lie on a north to south route running right through the city centre. Brussels North offers some superb open vistas to watch the very intensive services from and is well worth spending time at. This Belgian Railways Class 11 is heading a rake of Dutch coaches on the hourly intercity service from Amsterdam. The first public Eurostar service between London and Brussels ran on the 14th of November 1994, with an initial service of just two trains a day on Mondays to Fridays and one on Sundays. At present, all Eurostars to and from Brussels are sent by the classic route through Ath. It's a route that wasn't really designed for high-speed running, and Eurostars only manage an average speed of 91 kilometers an hour while on Belgian metals. This compares rather unfavorably with the high-speed section between Calais and Lille, where the same trains reach speeds of up to 300 kilometers an hour. Every day, more than 100 international trains crisscross the Belgian network. Some of them cover a relatively short distance, such as those linking Ostend and Brussels with Hamburg or Dortmund in northern Germany, for example, while others are truly transcontinental services, operating to and from Spain, Italy, Switzerland, Slovenia or even Russia. This dual voltage class 27 is heading a rake of French core ride coaches towards the French border. In the east of Belgium, class 16s can be seen on through trains to and from Germany. At Liège, number 1602 is arriving with the 0532 service from Ostend to Cologne. Coaching stock is a typical mixture of German and Belgian vehicles. In the opposite direction, sister locomotive number 1603 heads the 0714 service from Cologne to Ostend. Altogether, there are seven trains a day each way on this important international access. With 11 carriages in tow, giving a total trailing weight of just over 500 tonnes, the Class 16 needs some rear-end assistance for the steep climb out of liege guillemin station. Today a Class 55 loco is deputising for number 2383, which usually performs banking duties here. Named passenger services are still common throughout Europe, many being christened after famous authors, composers or statesmen like the Alexander von Humboldt, which is arriving from Berlin. Further variety on the rolling stock front is provided by overnight services like this from Brig and Chur in Switzerland, which is routed via France and Luxembourg. Recently, the European network of overnight trains has been revamped and relaunched with the brand name Euronight, the aim being to provide standards of comfort similar to those in hotels. Branching off from the busy east-west main line between Hasselt and Antwerp is an attractive and very well used freight only branch from Diest to Tessendelo. The variety and scale of the operation here really has no comparison with anything in the UK today. A Friday morning visit to Deast Station produces this westbound heavy freight working hauled by a pair of Class 51 diesels. The wagons at the front of the train have telescopic sliding hoods for steel coil traffic, while the rear part of the train is loaded rather unusually with huge concrete blocks. Shortly afterwards, a Class 62 arrives with the morning trip freight from Hasselt to Tessendelo. 
it'll have to run round here in Deast Yard in order to gain access to the Tassendalo branch. This is wagon load freight par excellence with a typical mixture of containers, tank wagons and vans. The Tassendalo branch is about 12 kilometers long and is single track throughout. It used to form part of a through route to Beringen, linking up with another cross country line from Mol to Hasselt. But the section beyond Tassendalo was closed some time ago, although the station at Tassendalo is still used by loco crews. East of Belgium, there are several major freight flows to and from Germany, which cross over the border near the interesting small town of Monzen. As we shall see, the new open border policy for Europe is already having a dramatic effect on rail freight patterns in this part of Belgium. This steel train is just setting out from Winterslag near Genk, behind a pair of Class 51 diesels. It's conveying locally produced steel plate, which will be rolled into coil at a German steel making plant. Ultimately, the coil will return to Belgium, again using rail transport. Between Monson and the German border, the freight-only line traverses this magnificent viaduct as it passes through the once neutral territory of Morisnet. It wasn't until 1919 that Morisnet finally became part of Belgium, following the signing of the Treaty of Versailles. This superb structure, which totally dominates the local village, is an important and well-known local landmark, and is even celebrated on locally available plastic carrier bags. Constructed between 1915 and 1918, the viaduct is 1,300 metres in length and has a maximum height above the valley bottom of 68 metres. During the Second World War, it was vulnerable because of its strategic position and it was blown up twice, once by Nazi forces and once by the Allies. It was finally rebuilt in 1948. Today the line is as busy as ever with international freight traffic. Until recently it was earmarked for electrification, although Belgian railways have now changed their minds and the funds have been diverted elsewhere. The actual border between Belgium and Germany is five kilometers or so to the east of Morisnet inside the Botzelaire tunnel. But even more curious is the gauntlet track arrangement. This allows large military loads to straddle both tracks and gain the increased loading gauge at the centre of the bore. As we've seen during the course of this programme, Belgium has plenty of interesting railway surprises to offer the serious enthusiast. If you've not yet sampled its delights, we can thoroughly recommend a visit. Language is generally no problem, many people speak English, and you can be assured of a warm welcome. We do hope that you've enjoyed this look at the unique railroads of this fascinating country. Bye for now.
The train is hauled by a Class 51 diesel electric, an early 60s mixed traffic design that can still be seen working in most parts of Belgium, except in the southeastern part of the country, where Class 55s are used instead. This mixture of wagon types is typical for a train conveying cold-reduced steel coil. The last wagon in the train carries the new Belgian Railways freight logo, B Cargo. On the left here are some of the access lines for other freight users of the branch, including a major coal import terminal. In a small country, the Belgian motive power fleet is remarkably varied. There are no less than 15 different classes of electric locomotive in regular service today. The most numerous electric type is the Class 23 design, with a fleet size of 83. The 23s are a useful mixed traffic design first introduced in the mid-1950s, but still performing well today. One of their features is regenerative braking for use when hauling heavy freight trains. Usually similar to the Class 23s are the Class 25s. The 25s are a less numerous class with just 22 examples in service. They were built as a standard design in the early 1960s, but eight of them were rebuilt in the early 70s as dual voltage machines so that they could haul cross-border trains to and from Amsterdam. They carry the old Benelux. There's a non-stop train from Ghent to Brussels every half hour throughout the day, and there are hourly intercity trains from Ghent to most other major towns in Belgium. A fascinating freight-only operation is the 30-kilometre-long branch line from Ghent to Terneuzen. Terneuzen lies on the lower estuary of the River Schelde and is in the Netherlands, but its only means of rail access, and direct road access too for that matter, is through Belgium. Because of that, the railway to Terneuzen is worked in two sections, joined together by these exchange sidings at Sass van Ghent. Trains for Terneuzen are brought as far as Sass van Ghent by a Belgian locomotive, in this case a Class 62 diesel electric, allocated to Merrowbaker depot in Ghent. On the Dutch part of the branch between Sass van Ghent and Terneuzen, it's always Netherlands Railways traction in charge. This Class 2200 diesel electric is arriving at Sass van Ghent with a rake of chemical tanks from one of the private sidings at Terneuzen. The branch itself is mainly single track, but like its partner on the other side of the canal, it's reasonably busy with several trains each weekday. This working is destined for the marshalling yard at Merrill Baker near Ghent, where the wagons will be shunted and fed into the European wagon load network. to both the UK and her other European neighbours, the country's fascinating railway network has generated comparatively little international interest. One of the busiest main lines in Belgium runs between Brussels and Ostend, with branches to three further coastal termini at Blankenberger, Zeebrugge and Nock. Like many Belgian towns, Ostend has the additional benefit and interest of trams as well as trains. This particular tramway is part of a long coastal route, stretching about 50 kilometres from Nock to De Pan. It's a remnant of the once extensive network of metre gauge Vicinal railways, most of which have now been closed. This imposing facade is a reminder of more prosperous times at Ostend, when the combination of rail plus ferry was the quickest way to travel between London and Brussels.
Today, much of the maritime trade has gone. The opening of the Channel Tunnel has spelt the demise of many of the long-distance trains which used to operate out of Ostend, serving places such as Baal, Vienna, Berlin and even Moscow. On the main line from Bruges to Brussels, there are few impediments to fast running. Trains are scheduled to cover the 96 kilometres in just under an hour. On the southern side of the city of Ghent is St. Peter's station, one of the busiest Belgian stations outside Brussels. The city centre is easily reached by the trams which stop outside the main entrance of the station. In railway terms, Ghent lies almost exactly halfway between Ostend and Brussels. Hello and welcome to Railroad Journeys Around the World. In this volume, we'll be looking at the distinctive railroads of Belgium. Considering the small geographical size of Belgium, the country as a whole offers an unrivaled selection of interest for the modern traction enthusiast. As we shall see, there's an incredible variety of interesting classes at work throughout the length and breadth of Belgium on both local and international passenger services. Also spotlighted is the wide assortment of freight traffic that works in Belgium on both mainline and less well-known freight-only lines. despite Belgium's close proximity delivery of yellow on dark blue. Another dual voltage design for working into the Netherlands is this class 11. A fleet of 12 class 11s was built for the Brussels to Amsterdam intercity service in the mid 1980s. The problem of different railway networks adopting conflicting electrification systems is potentially very serious in mainland Europe. The ultimate inflexibility has to be these class 16 and class 18 locomotives, which are capable of working on four different voltages, although these features obviously involve extra construction and operating expenses. The class 18s have unmistakable French styling and are based on the successful SNCF CC 40100 class. The Class 20 is the most powerful design of electric locomotive operated by Belgian railways. A fleet of 25 was introduced in the mid-1970s for intercity passenger duties. They were the first Belgian design to incorporate thyristor control and soon gained a reputation for poor reliability, although matters are now somewhat improved. The Class 27 was the first of the 1980s generation of Belgian electrics. It's a design that was developed after experience with the Class 20. A total of 60 Class 27s were built between 1981 and 1984, and they can be seen all over the Belgian network on both passenger and freight duties. The Class 21s are basically so 